or a series of more perfect union shows what unites us as Americans is far greater than what divides us. Coworkers at an auto plant in Anna, Ohio, combine their unique skills to literally give a team member a hand, you could say. The story is first reported by Scott Light. He's anchor at CBS affiliate, that's WBNS. 10 TV in Columbus, Ohio. Well, guess who's here at the table? That's you, Scott Light. Good morning. We're glad <laughs> to have you here. Have you. Hi, everybody. Live and in yeah. color. Good to see you. Thanks for the invite this morning. You're welcome. I want to introduce you to some folks that you're about to meet here who build cars, not mechanical body parts. But using a combination of old school handiwork, high tech engineering, and relationships around the world, they built something life changing. Each one's got a certain talent, and by themselves, they could do pretty good, but when you bring a whole group of people with different talents together, that's when things start clicking. This custom build isn't the kind you'd expect from workers at an auto plant. I would have never dreamed when I started here that we would ever do anything like this. This project had nothing to do with cars. So you've got tons of different backgrounds coming together to build something that nobody's ever, that no, none of us have ever done before. So, yeah, something so no one has done because these Honda colleagues came together to build an arm for fellow employee Tony Leonard. I'm an engineer for parts for cars. How am I going to build an arm? I'm not a doctor, you know. We've done a lot of research on it and figured out that we can do this. Tony suffered from a childhood spinal condition that brought new problems in adulthood. A surgery helped strengthen his legs, but a separate rare disease ravaged his left elbow. I had gone through uh, about five surgeries to try to stabilize it, and none of it was working. So the decision was just to go ahead and amputate it. Without a prosthetic arm to offer balance, Tony was wheelchair bound. So his colleagues stepped in. Manager Frank Colley came up with the idea. And knowing that the different technologies that we have, the scanning and the 3D printing, it was pretty obvious to me that we were capable of doing it. Just... Colley enlisted engineer Les Bowers, who assembled the right parts. This one here actually came out of a remote control helicopter. And the right people. Three servos, each servo controlling different portions of the hand. Richard Crossan created a comfortable stand. How you doing, Tony? To ensure accurate scans of both of Tony's arms. Doing good, Tony. Scott Jones created 3D models. And we would repeat this multiple times until we finally got something that worked very well for Tony. Once you get to know him, you would do anything you could to help him. Susie Bowles works in purchasing and used her connections to source supplies, some from as far as Japan. This is all sort of a prototype circuit board. Electrical design engineer Corey Howard brought the prosthetics fingers to life. David Mackey, also known as MacGyver, became the project's utility guy. There's some things that computers and machines can't figure out. It just takes experience. And I have the knack to be able to visualize beforehand what something's going to look like. After a couple of months, the team's work led to this day when Tony Leonard walked for the first time in two years. I was totally surprised um, how stable I was at first. <laughs> I, was, I was excited. My adrenaline was pumping. I was happy. I gotta say it was a pretty emotional day. It, it, was, it was great to see him walk again. <sighs> Eventually, Tony got a top of the line prosthetic through his insurance, but that arm had limitations. Attach it to the crutch. The team rallied again this time building a special hook so Tony could hold on to his crutches and leave his wheelchair behind. They got you out of that chair. Yeah, they got me out of this chair. How do you thank the guys for doing that for you? It feels pretty sturdy. The only way I can thank them is continue to get stronger and use the very product they provided for me. We're not a bunch of co-workers, we're, we're kind of a family over here, and it, it, it's, it's good to be part of that. Tony's team built six arms, each one bettering the last. So I have the fourth one and the last one here, we'll show you in a bit. Honda has a conference every year that highlights problem solving at its factories worldwide. Typically, that award goes to innovations designed for cars, of course. Last year, though, the top award went to the team from Ohio, 
for building those very Yay. arms. Yay. They deserve story. it. Wow. Yeah. So which arm is this? So that one's part of the last one. That, that one's part has. of okay. the fourth one. Mm -hmm. And so the fourth and the sixth one. So again, they built him six arms. And that one that you're holding right there, Nora. So that says, by the way, the power of dreams. Mm -hmm. That was tattooed in that arm. But that was part of the 3D imaging because they had to reverse engineer from his good arm to get something to fit his amputation. But you can already see the difference, though, Scott, right, between the fourth one and the last one. I'm the, so impressed. You can see that. Me too. Me too. So, these I, are workers. I, go ahead. Go who, ahead. These are workers who worked through lunch, came in early, worked late at night, and it's one of those stories that's it's pure. Mm -hmm. It's it's pure engineering meets pure love. Yeah. It shows you the skill of the auto worker, though. They're not just Absolutely. somebody that's putting yeah. widgets on a thing. Absolutely. The skill that they took to do that. And this is our nice. series, A More Perfect Union, is about how we have more in common than we have differences and, and care about one another. Yeah. So thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. All right, Scott Light of WBNS 10 TV. Great Thanks. to have you here.